patuloy na nagbibigay serbisyo. Pag-asa at saya. GMA Regional TV Kapuso ng Bawat Pilipino TV Weekend News. The biggest, the latest as local news matters. Lou and Mirandina. Alan Domingo. Cecil Kibot Castro broadcasting live from GMA Complex in Cebu. And this afternoon, we will also be joined by our counterparts from different regions. Nico Sereno from GMA RTV Balitang Vista. Rain Palino from GMA RTV Bico. As well as Rial Soroche from GMA RTV One Mindanao. My land, we have a very full lineup and very informative lineup of stories today. The biggest and the latest from the regions, together with Russell Simorio from GMA RTV Balitang Amianan and Adrian Prietos from GMA RTV One Western Visayas. For today's headlines, <laughs> Department of Health confirms three new COVID 19 cases in the country, recommends declaration of state of health emergency. Contact tracing is now being done for individuals who have had contact with an Australian national who tested positive for the coronavirus. Consumers are caught in the struggle over the possession and control of power distribution in Iloilo. Investigation report on the alleged involvement of policemen including Lt. Col. Jove Espinido in illegal drugs is due today. Amid the African swine fever scare, the public are encouraged to try lapan as an alternative to pork. And for the seafood lovers, there is a carinderia in Cebu that offers eat all you can. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Department of Health announced that the Philippines is now code red sub level 1 alert. With this development, DOH recommended for the Office of the President for the declaration of public health emergency. Details in this report of Nico Sereno live. Nico? Yes, my government and various stakeholders are expected to beef up their prevention measures in light of the three additional cases of the coronavirus disease here in the country. Yesterday, the Department of Health announced two new recorded cases of the coronavirus disease 2019 in the Philippines. The fourth case is a 48-year-old Filipino man who had recently traveled to Japan. The fifth case involved a 62-year-old Filipino man from San Juan who had no travel history. Just this afternoon, the DOH announced the sixth confirmed case. The 59-year-old woman was the wife of the fifth case. In light of the confirmation of localized transmission in the country and in anticipation of possible sustained community transmission, DOH has raised the COVID-19 alert system to code red sub-level 1. This is a preemptive call to ensure that national and local governments and public and private healthcare providers can prepare for possible increase in suspected 
and confirmed cases. For more than a month, there has been a decline in the number of passengers arriving at the Mactan Cebu International Airport following the travel ban to China, Hong Kong and Bacau. The decline can also be attributed to the partial travel ban to South Korea, which was recently lifted. Since March 1, close to 30 flights from these countries were cancelled. As a result, airline companies are implementing forced leaves without pay to their employees. Among flights, kay, since it's cancelled, man, so wala may work. Then, najip, uh, mana siya, possible nga gumagamay ang sildo. By March, uh, karapang mag impose karong uh, March sa nga month. So wala pa may like ka-feel nga ako. And it's either karong quincinas or by tinoy bin na mo ma-feel kung unsa dyan mo rag ang ang sildo ano. There's no flight, no more revenue, no more customers. So, masamot ang layoff sa mga staff, especially sa mga handling agents. Still in Cebu, hotels are experiencing a 50% decline in occupancy rate as a result of the booking cancellations. With the current situation, Cebu City Mayor Edgardo Labella is asking the businessmen not to cut down their workforce. Ang atong mga business community, especially kanang mga service provider, na kung mahimo, hinahinayon lang nato nga dili nato drastically atong mag magdismiss ng mga employees. In Iloilo City, Mayor Jerry Trenyas issued an executive order banning the entry of all sea vessels and sea crafts from China, Hong Kong, and Macau in the city sports. Affected na uh, amo na Japan ang aton problema. No? Uh, we want also to protect sang aton diri siyudad. Kaya pagsulod sina kabudlain. South Korea has the highest number of COVID-19 confirmed cases outside of China. Ida Vawenya, who is now residing in Incheon, says she is anxious with panic buying for food and face masks. Her video showed deserted streets in Incheon and small crowds at grocery stores and people wearing face masks. Halos din mi katulog nga sige lang mi og hulat sa update, update every every hour naga-update man gud diri so grabe jud among stress. Jojo Celestian, overseas Filipino worker also in South Korea, says that preventive measures are being implemented at the factory where he works. Bago kasi kami pumasok sa trabaho, kailangan nilang i-check yung body temperature namin umaga at sa katanghali. Meanwhile, a Filipina scholar in China who recently came home to Davao City for a vacation is now stranded because of the travel ban. She was supposed to fly back to China last February 23 for the resumption of classes after the winter vacation. We don't know yet when to come back. Talaga. Another Davaoenia, who is also studying in a university in Xiamen, said with the COVID-19 scare, classes are being held online. Just simple po, uh, mask and hand sanitizers which is pinamigay po lahat ng pinamigay po lahat ng school namin meron po kaming application which doon na lang po kami online online pipili at ipapadala po nila dito Still in China, Christine Venice, a native of Negros Occidental and a scholar in Beijing, does not see the need for her to return to the Philippines. She's on her second year in Beijing. Dito po sa school namin Every day po silang nagdi-disinfect and nagche-check ng body temperature. Wala naman po kaming balak umuwi ng kasama ko kasi safe naman po dito. In Macau, some hotels, restaurants and casinos were temporarily shut down to prevent the virus from spreading. According to Brian De La Cruz, an OFW from the Gupan, currently in Macau, they were forced to go on leave due to the virus outbreak. Yung mga iba, nagbubukas naman, pero kwan pa rin, matumal, may nang business. Kaya, mga iba, nagtatanggal sila, nagbabawas sila. Yung mga ibang company, nagsara, nagsara na. Hindi pa nga ako nagpagpadala kasi nakulong kami sa bahay, sabi niya. Piktado din kami dito, walang budget.
Just this afternoon, my officials have announced that President Rodrigo Duterte has agreed to issue a declaration of a public health emergency in the country with the rise of the COVID-19 cases. This declaration will facilitate the mobilization of resources and ease government processes, especially with the different measures to be implemented by the health department. My. Thank you, Nico Sereno. The Department of Health confirmed that three foreigners who recently visited the Philippines have tested positive for coronavirus disease 2019 in their own countries. And now authorities are doing contact tracing. Russell Simorio has the latest update live. Russell? Cecil, aside from confirming three new cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines, the Department of Health also confirmed that three foreign nationals from Japan, Taiwan, and uh, Australia tested positive for coronavirus disease after traveling the Philippines. One of the foreign nationals is an Australian citizen who was said to have gone around Metro Manila and Pangasinan before returning to Australia on March 2. The patient reportedly attended a reunion in Pangasinan on the third week of February. The provincial government of Pangasinan is conducting contact tracing to identify individuals who had con close contact with Australian citizen. According to Governor Amado Spino III, a high school reunion which was held on the third week of February with an estimated 300 attendees in including the Australian citizen. Nami masabi kasi we do not want to create panic. Dahil ang importante dito, mahanap yung tao, makausap, at maano sila, makita talaga kung they're showing the symptoms, ganito. Sa mga kababayan po namin, no, na uh, kayo po ay uh, naging bahagi ng mga reunions nung atin pong uh, nakaraang buwan ng Pebrero, no, at uh, sa palagay po ninyo may mga kaklase po kayo doon na galing po ng Australia o ng iba pa pong bansa na may positibo po ng kaso ng COVID-19, ay hinihikayat namin kayo na magpasuri. Cecil, the Pangasinan Provincial Health Office is in close coordination with the Department of Health regarding the contact tracing. Health authorities also advise the public to keep calm despite of the reports of foreigners um, affected by uh, coronavirus disease 2019. Back to you, Cecil. Thank you, Russell Simorio. Electric consumers in Iloilo City are caught in the struggle over position and control between two power distribution companies. Zen Kilantang has the details. The Panay Electric Company, or PECO, has a listed 65,000 consumers in Iloilo City. Most of these consumers are now struggling since they do not know who will service their concerns or where to pay for their electric bills. This is after Judge Emerald Contreras of the Regional Trial Court Branch 23 in Iloilo City issued a writ of possession last week to PECO's rival company, More Electric and Power Corporation, allowing the takeover of PECO's assets. <laughs> Balik kung din kami mabayad ng opisina ka more bala. Di mo mang kotani kami diri kung tuod na masurinder ang mga may contador sa more. PECO clarified that consumers should not remit their electricity bill payments to more power because PECO still has an existing contract with power suppliers such as Panay Energy Development Corporation and Panay Power Corporation. Before they can even start supplying energy to the city, they need to have those power supply contracts in place. No? If not, what happens is there will be total blackout no? because you need a power supply contract to be able to operate. In an official statement, more power clarified that they are currently not accepting payments but will begin billing consumers in April after a cut of reading. In a court hearing yesterday at RTC Branch 23, Judge Contreras ordered more power to return the operation to PECO, which states that PECO shall oversee the operations, while more power will only observe as part of their training. Meanwhile, the Energy Regulatory Commission revoked the Provisional Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity or CPCN of PECO after they granted the CPCN application of more power, authorizing them to operate. Ang more na ang may provisional authority. So kung wala ikaw provisional authority, wala ka business nga magpadalagan sang distribution utilities. 
But PECO said they will continue to operate until more power receives the actual CPCN. Yung order na binasa nila ngayon na galing di umano sa ERC ay hindi pa CPCN. Yun ay order pa lamang. At uh, sinasabi nga doon na wala pang CPCN. Uh, kundi temporary uh, permit lamang ang uh, binibigay. Another hearing with the ERC is set on March 26 with the ongoing legal battle consumers hope that struggle between two companies will be resolved to ensure continuous power supply in the city together with cameraman Rumel Porquia Zen Kilantang for GMA Regional TV Road clearing operations at a barangay in Davao City has resulted in tension more of this from Rial Suroche of RTV1 Mindanao live Rial Cecil, tension arise between the former barangay captain and current officials during the clearing operation in Davao City while in Cagayan de Oro City, an LGU personnel was shot dead while implementing road clearing. A confrontation erupted between former Barangay Captain Robert Olanolan and current officials of Barangay 76-A in Davao City during a road clearing operation. Former Barangay Captain Olanolan insisted that he will only allow the demolition team to demolish his parking area if they will also destroy the police outpost, including the Barangay Hall, which he said were also obstructions based on the measurement. But after the heated confrontation, the demolition of illegal structures in the area pushed through, including the parking area of the former barangay captain. In Cagayan de Oro City, the road clearing operation resulted to a shooting incident. Mark Langham IV, a roads and traffic administration personnel who was apprehending illegal motorized vehicles in Barangay Puerto, was shot to death by riding in tandem suspects. A few days after, the suspect, identified as John Mark Ryan, was arrested in Tagulwan, Misamis Oriental. Though he denied the allegation, police said the suspect was positively identified by eyewitnesses. Ang dinakpan sa PNP Tagulwan, positibong itudlo sa testigo. Kamu ay responsable paglutang pusil patay kang maka langam. Simultaneous operation is part of DILG's mandate that targets barangay in new 75-day road clearing. Cecil. Thank you, Rial Soroche. The brain behind a multi-million peso investment scam in Mindanao was arrested in Argao, Cebu. The suspect admitted to accumulating over 600 million pesos in assets within two months from operation. Details in this report. This is John Rel Revilla, CEO of Chantal Business Center operating in General Santos City. He is now under the custody of the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group Region 7 for syndicated staffa. Revilla was arrested in Argao, Cebu in a joint operation of the Argao Police Station and CIDG 7. He had been hiding in Cebu after several investors filed cases against him in Mindanao. Galing po ito sa, issued po ito ni Judge Renato Tampak of RTC 11 Branch 59 po ng General Santos City. So, nung nareceive po natin ito, ginordinate po natin ito sa Argao Police Station headed by Police Major Miranda. Revilla insisted that his company is legitimate but was severely affected when Malacanang did a crackdown on all investment schemes. However, he also admitted that the company's assets reached 
up to 600 million pesos in just two months after he allegedly invested foreign and exchange trading. Revilla said that his investors quadrupled their money in just one week. Wag yung problema atong sa pila ka duration from May to June ng operation. Wala yun. Naga, nakati out yun ang mga tao. Daga pag nagpasalamat, ngayon ako man ilang balay, nakapinagra. Revilla added that the company's financial standing plummeted after his trusted employees allegedly ran away with the money. Revilla assured the investors that he would find a way to return their investments. He will be brought back to Mindanao to face the charges. Pinaprocess na po natin yung ano, pinaprocess na po ng uh, concern unit po yung kanyang pag-return po ng uh, warrant of arrest. At the same time po, i-schedule na po yung kanyang pag uh, ano po, pag uh, hatid doon sa General Santos City. I promise good na ako. Mabalik kita, mabalik medyo ang kwarta. Together with Marlon Milgaso, I'm Alan Domingo for JMA Regional TV. CCTV footage showed how thieves looted different establishments and carted away thousands of pesos. Details in this report of King Guevara from GMA RTV Dagupan. A CCTV video showed the man passing in front of the camera several times, suspiciously trying to hide his face. After an hour, the man was once again seen, this time carrying a plastic bag and a folded box, which allegedly contained stolen items from a nearby dermatology clinic. Pagpasok ko, maglilinis po sana ako nun eh. Tapos, pagtingin ko, napansin ko yung machine namin, yun na nawala. Authorities estimated more than 500,000 pesos worth of dermatology equipment products and cash was stolen by the suspect. Alam nang lumo talaga ako. Uh, yung isip namin, hindi naman talaga namin lubos maiisip na mananakawan nga kami ng ganun. Kasi feel safe naman kami dito sa coin, sa building na to. Baka mayroon pa siyang mabiktima na iba, eh mas mabuti pong ipaalam na lang sa kinaukulan or sa amin. Yung ating pong mga CCTV dahil napakahalaga po nito, nakakapag-aid po ito sa pagkandak natin ng investigation. Dahil mula po sa ating mga CCTV footages ay maaari nating ma-identify yung mga kawatan. In Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu, over 4,000 pesos in donations was carted away from a health center in Pajo. CCTV footage showed two minors loitering outside a gym. A few hours after the two were seen scaling the fence of the health center and went to the back of the building, the two returned carrying a bag. In Bacolod City, another CCTV video showed a man carrying a gun at a compound in a subdivision in Barangay Estefania. A few minutes later, Another armed man was seen sneaking out of a house. The owner of the house who refused to be identified said, The suspects took 400,000 pesos worth of gadgets that included a TV and other valuables. The suspects managed to escape in a white SUV waiting outside the house. The suspects are believed to be part of a five-man group who operates on big houses, especially in subdivisions. Way back 2017, drugs. Uh, drugs initia, they are also drug personalities. Sa 2017, nag-init na nila sa Bacolod. Amo ni nagtabok ni sila sa panay. I am King Guevara for Jimmy Regional TV. The investigation report on the alleged inclusion of Lieutenant Colonel Juvie Spinido and President Rodrigo Duterte's narco list is set to be submitted today. John Sala tells more in this report. The Philippine National Police is set to submit today to the President its findings on police personnel allegedly included in the PRRD's narco list. One of those investigated was Lt. Col. Joe V. S. Pinido. Before his accident, PNP spokesperson Brigadier General Bernard Banak said that all police regional offices where Espinito served as a police officer have already submitted their investigation report on Espinito's alleged involvement in the drug trade. Lahat ng regions ay nakapagpasa na ng kanilang uh, result. So uh, the National Adjudication Board uh, is now uh, consolidating it. No? So we're, they are now the final process now. Banak added that among the 357 cops included on the list, Espinito was the only one who violated the PNP chief's gag order. That prohibits those being investigated from giving statements in relation to their inclusion on the list. Banak reiterated that the investigation on Espinito's violation of the gag order is still under the jurisdiction of the Police Regional Office 6 in Iloilo City, where Espinito is currently assigned. As we know, na, uh, nagkaroon siya ng mga statements without uh, permission from the authority of uh, PRO 6. So uh, it will be dealt, dealt with 
uh, locally dito sa PRO 6. Espedito is currently detailed at the personal holding and accounting unit of PRO 6 until further notice. Together with cameraman Cirilo Duque, John Sala for Jimmy Regional TV. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. A fifth is uh, camp for obese uh, policemen is set to kick off in Negros Occidental next week in the light of the body mass index monitoring program of the PNP. While a video of an obese cop exercising as instructed by the Negros Occidental Police Director has gone viral. Adrian Pieros has the details. Live, Adrian. Yes, Alan, overweight or oversized policemen assigned in the province of Negros Occidental will undergo a 45 to 60 day weight reduction program or training. This is to reduce their BMI or body mass index and to make sure that they would improve their mobility. This is in compliance with the order of the Philippine National Police Chief General Archie Gamboa. In this video, Negros Occidental Police Provincial Office OIC Director Colonel Romeo Baleros is seen instructing an obese cop to exercise inside his office. The cop was made to do stationary jog, sit-ups, and push-ups. The video was posted by Baleros himself in his Facebook account. Some netizens have expressed their dismay in the video, saying it appears that Baleros was making fun of the policeman. In a press conference, both Baleros and the cop identified as alias Big Boy downplayed the issue. The cop was transferred to the provincial headquarters for the Negros Occidental Provincial Mobile Force Company to strictly monitor his diet and exercise habits. Makita ng mga police dito sa Negros Occidental yung program. Kaya sabi ko, ito para makita nila, ma-encourage, ma-motivate na gawin din itong ginagawa. Alias Big Boy insisted that he has no ill feelings towards Director Baleros and that he is bent on reaching his desired weight of 80 kilograms from 146. Good legacy, good Alias Big Boy is one of the obese policemen from several police stations in the province who will be temporarily housed at the provincial headquarters to join the 60-day fitness program set to start next week. For 45 to 60 days, na nandito sila sa loob ng camp para matrim down naman significantly yung kanilang timbang. Despite the campaign of the provincial director to help the obese cops lose weight, the spokesperson of the PNP reminded the policemen to be more responsible with what they post online. Brigadier General Bernard Banak said that there are proper ways to attain the prescribed body mass index. Yung mga postings sa social media, may mga kwantay dyan, protocols. No? It has to uh, have a, uh, an approval of the authorities nila. According to Banak, 59% of the police force in the country have passed the required body mass index. The remaining 41% may face sanctions if they will not double their efforts to hit their target BMI. Furthermore, Alan, the provincial director of the NOCPPO is also asking the assistance of our local chief executives here to donate exercise equipment for gym and for the proposed fitness camp for policemen. He will also consult a dietitian to make sure that while losing weight, proper nutrition will be enforced among our obese cops. Back to you, Alan. Thank you, Adrian Prietos. A pregnant woman was barred from taking a flight to Manila at Lagindingan Airport in Misamis Oriental after she was allegedly misdiagnosed by an airline crew. Cyril Chavez has the details. A pregnant woman from Cagayan de Oro City, Richelle Herong, was waiting to board her flight to Manila with her three-year-old son. Richelle was traveling to take a lymphocytes antibody test or LAT for her delicate pregnancy. But instead... She got offloaded from her flight and waited for nine hours after an airline ground crew at Lagindingan Airport allegedly misdiagnosed her. In her viral post on social media, she felt that her rights were violated and she was harassed by the airline crew when the crew said she has an infectious disease using only Google search. Pero nung dumating na yung supervisor, naging iba na, naging lymphocytes na yung sakit ko. So again, inexplain ko yung side ko na hindi nga siya, hindi siya medical condition, it's a test and it's normal. Pero I was required again to 
ano, to submit a medical certificate. The crew said that Richelle is not fit to travel because she believed that having lymphocytes is infectious and could be dangerous to other passengers. But a medical expert said it is normal for a person to have lymphocytes. So ang lymphocyte is part na siya sa ato ang blood cells sa ato ang lawas. So ang normal na tao, kita tanan as long as you are living, natay uh, lymphocytes. Meanwhile, in a written statement issued by the airline company, they are already looking into the incident and are currently doing investigation. The management has also reached out to the complainant for possible settlement. Together with cameraman James Yap, I am Cyril Chavez for GMA Regional TV. Because of kind-hearted souls, the dream of a high school student to wear a perfect gown to her junior and senior prom came true. More in this report of John Ponsoy. Having a nice gown to wear to her junior and senior prom is the hashtag goal for 16-year-old Gaysel de Guzman. And because of the kindness of two people, her dream of becoming a fairy tale princess came true. She got to wear a new gown designed and created by the owners of a gown rental shop in Mangataram, Pangasinan. According to owners Rika and Edison, the red umbrella cut ball gown was not Jaisal's first choice. She initially chose a cheaper gown. Jaisal whispered to Rika that she only has 30 pesos as down payment for the gown. Ate, kasi yun lang po kasi yung baon ko. Na yun lang po yung baon ko na maghapon, yun lang po yung pwede kong ma makayang ibigay sa inyo kasi wala pang nautang ang aking ina. Yung nanay nito, fishbowl vendor, yung father niya namatay na. Nakikitira na lang sila doon sa tita. After hearing this, they asked Jaisel to return to their gown shop to fit a new gown. The two also provided shoes to match the gown and even offered to do the makeup for free. The story of Rika and Edison's kindness has been shared for more than 19,000 times with 15,000 comments and reactions. Rika and Edison said they too went through the same difficulty in life. Ang hirap ng buhay. Wala kang wala kang pangrent kaya hindi namin naranasan. Nasa mag-rent, mag-GS. Jaisal was overwhelmed by the act of kindness. Thank you po sa kay Ate Rika po. Tapos po sa mga kaibigan ko po. Na nag-push sa akin. <laughs> Kasi po, pag wala po sila, hindi mo po nila ako natulungan. Wala din po sana ako dito ngayon. Together with cameraman Henry Dominsil, I am Joan Punsoy for GMA Regional TV. African swine fever continues to affect various regions in the country. Rain Palino has the details. Live Rain. Alanaga City was recently declared under state of calamity after blood samples of hogs from two barangays tested positive for African swine fever. These two barangays have around 500 to 1,000 affected hogs. City, uh... The Department of Agriculture will give an indemnification fee of 5,000 pesos, while Nage LGU will give 2,000 pesos for backyard hog racers with sucklings who own 20 heads and below. They also committed to give 1,000 pesos while waiting for DA's financial assistance. Minarahay po kan sudat uh, kan lokal na gobyerno kanaga na immediately matao po kita nin 1,000 pesos. Since March 1, the Naga City slaughterhouses only allow the slaughtering of large animals like cows and carabaos. In Naga City People Small, around 40 affected stall owners are now seeking assistance from the Naga LGU. Tapos yung mga katulong namin, walang hanap buhay. Kailangan nila din ang pang-araw-araw na hanap buhay. The Naga LGU coordinated with a slaughterhouse in Milaor that the National Meat Inspection Service allowed temporarily where meat vendors could source out meat. To avoid the spread of ASF, the Naga City Slaughterhouse intensified its disinfection and sanitation procedures, including the population and establishment of checkpoints. In Pangasinan, 16 municipalities and 3 cities are now affected with ASF. 59 barangays tested positive of the virus and more than 6,000 hogs were called. Ang pag-spread kasi ng virus ay hindi natin uh, basta-basta makontrol kasi wala hong bakuna. At saka may mga, pa rin, may mga biyahiro pa rin na nagpipilit na kumukuha sa mga infected na baboy at binebenta. Based on farm gate price of hogs, OP Vet estimates over 37 million pesos in damages due to ASF. In Davao City,
The Bankerohan Public Market Meat Vendors Association has initiated a free pork meat tasting to ensure that the pork meat being sold in the market is safe to eat. This amid the recent ASF infestation that hit the three barangays in the city. Meat vendors partner with the Department of Agriculture 11, CityVet, NMIS 11, and Davao Hog Racers Association in organizing the free tasting of lechon and other pork products. The Davao City Public Vendors Federation said meat vendors lost 50 to 60 percent in revenue when the ASF virus hit the city. Alan, in coordination with the Department of Agriculture, PNP, and other concerned agencies, local government units continue with their monitoring and surveillance. Authorities also advise the hog raisers to follow protocol. Alan? Thank you, Rain Palino. With the ongoing AS ASF scare, the Department of Agriculture is encouraging the public to try rabbit meat. Details in the report of Ivy Hernando. Farmers are being encouraged to start rabbit farming due to the effect of the African swine fever on the hog industry. Rabbits can be easily bred and its white meat is considered safe for consumption. And here in Vigan City, we found several dishes where rabbit meat is the main ingredient. Wilma Ruiz, who is into rabbit propagation, taught us how to prepare rabbit curry. Prepare garlic, onion, ginger, carrots, and potato. Now saute it with the lapan or rabbit meat. After 15 minutes, pour in the coconut milk. Mix the curry powder, salt, potatoes, carrots, and milk. Once it's cooked, resisting this rabbit curry dish is next to impossible. Kasi yung may sarasa po siya, yun yung mas masarap para sa akin. Kasi habang niluluto mo siya, nanunood yung, ano, yung mga ingredients na nilalagay mo. One can also try deep-fried lapan meat. For someone who once had a pet rabbit like me, eating its meat is really uncomfortable. But, parang native chicken lang talaga. It is actually one of the best na white meat, and then ito ay ito sa high percentage of digestible protein. So ibig sabihin mas madali siyang iabsorb ng katawan, and then less salt, less fat, and then it's almost cholesterol free. With its health benefits, demand for rabbit meat is now on the rise. Together with cameraman Norman Raka, I am Ivy Hernando for Jamie Regional TV. A girl from Bukidnon whose hair and scalp were accidentally ripped off after her hair got entangled in a corn mill is now slowly recovering at a hospital in Davao City. The girl's family expressed gratitude to all those who helped with her medical treatment. Eight-year-old Leia Joydin Lauso is still confined at the Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao City and is slowly recovering from a severe wound on the head. Leia's hair and scalp were ripped off when her hair accidentally got stuck in a corn mill in Quezon, Bukidnon. When Leia's case was featured in Kapusumo, Jessica Soho, help from numerous individuals and groups came pouring in. Her family is thankful for the overwhelming support they have received since Leia's accident. The girl's treatment will continue until her scalp and her hair returns to normal. Ako nagpasalamat sa social media sa mga katawahan nga nagtabang na ko nga daging salamat ka ninyo kayo wala pa mo wala yung may makagaulan Huwag may kadilip masulubad ang problema. Good day everyone and here's our weather update for today. The low pressure area located northwest of Zamboanga City continues to affect the western section of Mindanao and the western section of Visayas. And it's still less likely to become a tropical cyclone for the next 24 to 48 hours. It continues to move westward and the combined effect of this LPA and the tail end of the cold front will bring scattered moderate to occasional heavy rains over the provinces of Palawan, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Albay, Sorsogon, and Catanduanes. Meanwhile, the northeast monsoon or Amihan continues to affect northern Luzon, bringing partly cloudy to cloudy skies and only isolated rains over the provinces in this area. And for our wind and sea condition, moderate to strong winds continues to affect northern Luzon with 
moderate to rough seas. And for the rest of Luzon down to Visayas and Mindanao, we'll only experience moderate winds and moderate rough sea condition. For more weather updates, visit the Pagasa website at bagong.pagasa.dost.gov.ph and check out our social media accounts in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And that's our weather update for today. Reporting from Pagasa, Visayas, DOST in Mactan, this is Netherlands Salitrero Delphine. Have a good weekend. In Pigkawayan, Cotabato Province, a, nine, a grade 9 student was killed following a strong blow on his nape by his classmate. Tech Ocampo of GMA Regional TV 1 Mindanao will give us the full details. A single blow to the nape killed the 17-year-old student of Pigkawayan, Cotabato Province. Jesse Pulpol, a grade 9 student, and his 15-year-old classmate were just messing around inside their classroom. Jesse did a neck lock on his classmate, which allegedly angered the latter, who then punched him on his nape. Jesse was knocked unconscious and was immediately brought to the school clinic. But when his condition worsened, he was rushed to the hospital. The attending doctor tried to revive Jesse but failed. Jesse's mother could not believe that with just a single blow, her son is gone. The school principal is reminding students to behave properly in school. Sabi ko, iwasan ninyo yung mga biruan-biruan ninyo na hindi nyo alam ang hindi. Oo. Kung ano ang magiging, magiging consequence niyan kung magkapuruan kayo. I'm Teco Campo for GMA Regional TV. To seafood lovers out there, a Carinderia in Cebu City offers an eat-all-you-can seafood treat. Let's have a taste through Sara Hilom and Velasco's report. Jewel Alert, seafood lovers! A Carinderia here in Cebu City may be what you all have been looking for with its seafood all-you-can treat. For only 199 pesos, you can taste at least 10 seafood dishes in their seafood buffet offering. First stop, appetizers! This gusot salad, a type of seaweed dish, is a great appetizer. This fried crablet is perfect for sharing. While this mouth-watering shrimp, cooked regular or spicy, could bring you to seafood heaven. Shrimp and then next, then ang sauce. And then 3 to 5 minutes, una na siya maloto, then pwede nang kaon. And if you want more, they also offer dried fish cooked in tomato sauce or you can order a simple dried fish cut in half or a grilled bangus dish. Unta kung medyo na iparat-parat lami man sa kayo. So muna ang among i-apply ng bulad para ma-kuansad nga. Maiba po ang ilang panglasa ba. Together with Klufer Lumayag, I am Sara Hiloman Velasco for GMA Regional TV. We would like to thank everyone from around the Philippines as well as our Kapuso Abroad for watching our episode. You can watch this episode and more on GMA Regional TV's official YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to get the hottest news from the regions. Thank you for joining us and from all of us here in Central and Eastern Visayas. This has been GMA Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Happy, Happy weekend, weekend, mga Kapuso! kapuso.